Okay, we're going to leave a handle on a broom today. Now, to show you how I prepare a broomstick uh, for, for a woven handle, I'm just going to take this bark off because it's loose at the end. Uh, first of all, this is mostly aesthetic. I'm just trimming the end of the broom. Nice little chamfer all the way around. We'll just okay, now what I'm going to do is carve a channel for the string to, to lie in. And the way to carve this is just a little V-cut. One direction and the other. And you just go all the way around doing that. So that's how I prepare a broom to take the winding cord. Now I've got a broom here that's finished and I want to put a handle on it. This is a cobweb broom. It's a long skinny broom meant for reaching up into the uh, high corners of a room to take out the cobwebs. So, oh. the cord. Tie the cord on. I'm going to use a clove hitch. Got a little loop of uh, linen. This is linen warp from a weaving supply store. It's about the weight of uh, crochet cotton. Oh, crochet cotton looks That's where I want to nice hanging loop in. It's right at the back. Okay, so I'm just going to go around once, just like that. And from here on, I'll be winding from the spinner down at my feet. Lay in the stalks here, the split stalks. Lay them in pit side out three quarters of an inch to an inch beyond that uh, in the direction of the brush, the main part of the stalk, towards the handle. That one's got some mildew on it. I'm going to lay it aside. I like to use pieces of uh, stalk that are well at least two inches longer than I think I want the handle to be. I've got this bound down here, and uh, I'm going to go up towards the handle a little bit, towards the handle end, and this is to ensure that I cover the binding cord, so that when I bend the stalks over you won't see that. Okay, I'm coming all the way around here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to V off in the wrong direction. I'm going to go that way with it. This is normally a no-no, but it's what you have to do when you're laying on a handle in this way. So there's just a quick V off, and Ving off just means holding the thing at an angle and taking the wrap around so you can, as you can see, from the starting point, it creates a little V. Now I'm going to bind off just twice, three times around, something like that. Okay, here's my starting point right here. I don't know if you can see that, where the cord emerges between the stalks. It's a little difficult to see, but it's right here. So that's where I'm, where I'm starting. I'm going to fold my stalks over, and you can do them one at a time as you go around, or do them all at once like I'm doing here. It doesn't make much difference. Whatever works best and is most comfortable for you. Okay. Now I'm going to start the weaving by binding up.
And when I come to the end of the woven handle, I'm going to be binding off with a total of about seven wraps. And so I'm going to do the same here, just for the sake of consistency. So, uh, just like any kind of wrapping when you're tying a broom, you want the wraps to continue very neatly, tightly against every every course, every wrap goes tightly against the wrap before it and it progresses in one direction only. You don't want to be crossing back over yourself. It doesn't look good. And it probably doesn't hold as well. Now what I'm going to do is see how many broom stalks I've got here. I'm going to bend this one up a little bit. That's number one, two, nine. Three. I have an odd number, which makes life easy. I can do a simple under one, over one weave. So I'm going under the first one. Over the second. Under the third. Over the fourth. Under the fifth. Now as you can see, as I progress, and this is important, especially in the first course, after I've gone under a stalk, I pull the, pull the cord back this way and then tighten it. That gives you a good tight weave. So I'm holding the stalks down now with my hand, pull it back, give it a pull to tighten it. And it all happens pretty quickly. If you have an even number of stalks, you can either take one that's wider than the others and split it, and stick with the simple over one, under one weave, or go with uh, under two, over one. said, that first couple of courses, you need to pay a little closer attention to your tension. Make sure you maintain it. But after that, it's pretty well set. Okay, I'm just about back to the beginning. Okay. Yeah, it's right here between these two stalks. That's my starting point. And I've got about enough handle here. I'm running out of stalks, so I'm going to go ahead and bind off. As you can see, as I'm binding off, when I go around, I try to give a little extra tug every half quarter turn or half turn or so uh, to make sure I'm maintaining my piece of uh, nylon, which has a nice hard finish to it, so it slides easily. This hemp cord, like I said earlier, it's got a kind of a coarse texture to it, so it binds on itself really well. So if I tried to use a, a hemp pull cord, with hemp binding cord, I'd have so much friction there that I'd have trouble pulling it through. We'll see what I mean in a minute. One more wrap on this. Just to make sure it's well bound. There we are. Now, pull this down a little bit. Yeah, that slides easily. So I just got a little bit of loop there. Hanging on to my cord, I'm going to take my knife out. Cut that. I like to put my thumb right here so the cord doesn't slide. Okay, slip it through the loop. And then I'm going to take the other end of the loop, and this is where the knot is. You don't want the knot up there because you'll never get it through. Pull it down, jerk it through. Oh boy! <laughs> there we are. 
that goes a lot easier with waxed linen, but I'm pretty sure this is not going to slip. All right, I'll trim my cord off just as close as you want. And now I'm going to go around and the stalks off. And I don't want to have my hand way out here in the air. I could very easily slip and hurt myself one way or another. So I'm kind of bracing my hand. Either I put my thumb against the, the broomstick or against the other hand, or I kind of cross them over. At any rate, you want to make sure your knife hand is locked to something. And it's pretty simple. It's just a rock and a little bit of a slide. Make the cut. And here you are, finished row. Nice, simple over one, under one. All right, this is an over one, under two weave. You can see it's the cord passes over this, under these two, over this one, under these two, over this, and can, and and so forth. And it takes on a spiral actually kind of opposite to the direction I was actually moving, which is kind of neat. But uh, that spiral effect is what you get if you do an over one, under two weave. Over one, under two, over one, under two. So I had uh, ten stalks that I started with on this one, an even number, and that's what allows you to go over one, under two. Um, so